10 News begins with breaking news. We begin with breaking news. The National Guard is coming to San Diego County. Sheriff Bill Gore made the announcement on Twitter. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. The San Diego Sheriff's Department tweeted this just about 30 minutes ago, saying that 200 members of the National Guard are in the county right now following a request from Sheriff Gore. They will work alongside law enforcement, providing security to critical infrastructures, including public buildings, courthouses, power grids during the protest to prevent looting and arson. Our tenders breaking news tracker is there live right now. Paul Andereg is there, so we understand they're starting to assemble right now, Paul. Yeah, you can see the troops are actually unloading out of the out of those troop transports. You can see them walking the stairs up uh, towards the front of that police station. You can see there the sign uh, we we will never forget. Uh, it's right out in front of the lobby. You can see more of the troops out here uh, deploying around the police station. It looks like they arrived uh, just a few minutes ago, maybe 10, 15 minutes ago, and several of these uh, troop transport trucks and several Humvees with other equipment uh, continuing to offload here. And uh, we don't see any protesters or anything like that in the area. Um, pretty much no one in the area around here, and that's not just because it's closed off, just uh, there's really no one in the surrounding areas uh, at this time of night. Thank you, Paul. There has been a curfew in effect in La Mesa for hours now, and a big presence will be in La Mesa after a weekend of violent and fiery protests in the city over the death of George Floyd and this incident. Late this afternoon, La Mesa police released body camera footage of the altercation with Amari Johnson and an officer last week. The cell phone video is on the left. The body camera video is on the right. 10 News reporter Adam Rakusin has the question still unanswered. Thank you for joining us. Just today. ahead of a heated there, press conference, the La Mesa Police Department released body camera video of an incident between an African American man and a white La Mesa police officer. Get off me, bro. You got me for it, bro. I already told you it's coming straight. You look goofy as hell, bro. Stop Sit touching down. me, bro. Obviously, yeah, nobody's going nowhere. Smack hey, 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 what I tell you? Sit I told down. you I was waiting for somebody to come here. Okay. They right here, bro. Sit down. Oh, oh my God, you're tough as up. Hey, you tough as Stop. Hey, we don't care. Stop. You goofy as hell, bro. Hey, Mr. You making a big deal out of nothing, Brody. You making a big deal out of nothing, Brody. You making a big deal out of nothing. You real big, though, huh? Hey, you real big. This is the officer's perspective you're looking at. Amari Johnson, the man you see in the video, says he was waiting for his friends near an apartment building when officers showed up. He says he was cited for resisting arrest and assaulting an officer. Today, the La Mesa police chief said officers initially made contact with Johnson for smoking in public in the trolley area. Johnson disputes that and said the video doesn't show that. Challenge anybody who does have any other video to release it and show anything that states otherwise. There is a lot of people who are there that day. Um, there's a reason why the police haven't released the body cam footage, and I don't believe they will release the full body cam footage in its totality. But if they were to, you would not see any smoke, marijuana, or me, um, there any proof of me having that. According to the officer's report, the initial contact was for smoking. But he was not charged with smoking. He was charged with those two other charges. Why not? The officer... No, I know. I understand. The officer made a decision exactly what the charge Mr. Johnson with. So we are hoping to get some better context of how this incident began, but the body camera video the city released doesn't show the beginning. The first 30 seconds of the conversation between Johnson and the officer doesn't have any audio. Tonight we know the officer is on leave and the city is investigating the incident. Adam Rakusin, 10 News. And we have posted the full video of the officer's body cameras showing the arrest of Amari Johnson, so you can watch it for yourself. You'll find it on the 10 News mobile app and 10news.com. Community advocates also sounded off today about a 59 year old woman hit by a beanbag round during a protest that got violent. 10 News reporter Anthony Pura continues our team coverage in La Mesa. Anthony, the woman's family is not satisfied with the answers they heard tonight. The woman was one of thousands of people protesting outside the La Mesa Police Department on Saturday when she was hit in the face by a beanbag round. La Mesa Police has confirmed it was one of their officers that fired the round, but at this point they are not releasing his name. We've blurred the video because of its graphic nature, but it shows 59 year old Leslie Furcron bloodied on the ground after being hit by a beanbag round. La Mesa's police chief says the incident is under review, adding his officers are not trained to aim for the head. The beanbag round and the training and according to policy, it's the 
the aim is towards the torso area. La Mesa's mayor says they were overwhelmed by the crowds on Saturday. After the protests began to turn, we reached out for assistance from our partners across the county and even requested aid from the National Guard, but unfortunately they were deployed in Los Angeles and we were told they were unavailable. Community members came with their own questions, outraged about what unfolded. Not one of you guys responded, not one of you guys went and said, we'll call paramedics, we'll help her. Not one of you guys helped her. Why did you not help her? Officials answered by saying they were dealing with a very riotous situation, and by the time they were able to get to Furcron, emergency crews had already taken her from the scene. Family members and community advocates were not satisfied with the answers. My mom is 59 years old. She didn't break no law, she wasn't being violent or nothing. We want answers. She was shot between the eyes. She's now in the hospital facing a long road to recovery. Chief got up here today and said that the officer aim, the officer's aim might have been off. My mother was shot in the middle of the forehead. How is his aim off? That doesn't make sense. In La Mesa, Anthony Pura, 10 News. As we mentioned earlier, the National Guard, with help from security in our region amid recent protests and riots, some troops will be sent to La Mesa. The city is also extending its nightly curfew through Sunday. It started at 7 p.m. It runs until 5.30 a.m. El Cajon also has a curfew in effect tonight during the same hours, and a curfew is in effect for the area of the city of Santee. That is west of Magnolia Avenue from 7.45 until 6 a.m. People should stay off the streets unless they're going to work or they have an emergency. The list of local law enforcement agencies banning the use of the carotid restraint is growing tonight. The San Diego County Police Chiefs and Sheriff's Association says 15 local agencies have now banned the practice. A carotid restraint involves rendering a person unconscious by compressing the sides of the neck. San Diego Sheriff Bill Gore explains why his department made that decision. By eliminating this technique, which has become controversial. Uh, it allows us to, to tell our communities we're listening to them. We hear, we hear the pain. We, we all have, I think, felt the pain after what we saw in Minneapolis. It's been universally condemned. The San Diego Police Chief David Nislight was the first to announce Monday that his department is stopping the practice. I feel very strongly that we are finally making a difference. As protests continue, community faith leaders want to change the narrative by using prayer to come together. And as our 10 News reporter Laura Acevedo shows us, a prayer vigil in Southeast San Diego gave hope to those that attended. This is a prayer for the unity of God's people. Bowing their heads in prayer, people in Southeast San Diego joined a dozen faith leaders for an outdoor prayer vigil. Prayer is a way to heal. Um, in, in the scriptures, uh, it talks about healing. Robert Robinson lives in Broadway Heights. He helped organize the event on Martin Luther King Jr. Way. We're together because, because we're tired. Each religious leader spoke about how prayer can heal, speaking about the death of George Floyd and the arrest of Amari Johnson at the trolley station in La Mesa. Parents brought their children. Helpless at times for what can we do, what difference can we make, we're, we're starting in a place of humility and learning and listening as much as we can. This time around, I have hope and I believe that with action, there's actually going to be true long-term change this time around. And faith leaders called for the prayers to turn into action that will lead to change. It's about what's the next step. We need to be practical and we need to turn this uh, uh, feelings into a practical movement. In the North County, another peaceful protest on the beach to honor George Floyd. Dozens of surfers paddling out in his honor, calling for unity and change. Laura Acevedo, 10 News. Tonight, all four former Minneapolis police officers involved in the incident that led to the death of George Floyd are now in custody. Derek Chauvin's charges have been upgraded to second degree murder. This as protests continue all around the country, the majority of them have been peaceful. ABC's Alex Perche has more on how this news of the arrests is resonating within the Minneapolis community. This afternoon, the news so many in this community have been waiting for. More charges, more arrests in the case of George Floyd. Former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin's charge upgraded to second degree murder. The other three officers involved charged with aiding and abetting second degree murder. I strongly believe that these developments are in the interest of justice 
for Mr. Floyd, his family, our community, and our state. Tonight, all four officers in custody. Floyd protesters reacting all over the country, but especially here in Minneapolis. The energy here at the memorial has really increased as news about those additional charges has kind of come through here. We've seen folks standing in solidarity, singing, coming together. Many of them actually from this community and spoke about what this day meant to them. This gives me chills and makes me happy and sad and to see everybody together, but sad because it's for that happened. What happened here should not have happened and it shouldn't happen anywhere. I feel that this is going to be the time where we can finally get some justice. George Floyd's longtime friend Stephen Jackson also visiting the memorial after hearing the news. I know the family was pushing for her in the first degree, but just I see the big picture. Uh, I would rather be murder, uh, second degree murder and get all of them in where you, can, where you can put all of them and bury all of them. The charges coming nine days after the killing of George Floyd. Earlier in the day, Floyd's son Quincy visited the site for the first time. Very reunited with my family, trying to get justice for my father. And this news resonating nationally. Protesters taking a knee in Washington, D.C., steps from the White House. Floyd's death has sparked largely peaceful protests from New York City to Southern California. It's caused change, too. In Philadelphia, a controversial statue of former Mayor Frank Rizzo, known for discriminatory policies, removed overnight. Richmond, Virginia, doing the same with a statue of Robert E. Lee. And for so many in this Minneapolis community, it's the first step in action they believe is overdue. I have to be positive, you know, and have, be hopeful that, okay, now they hear us, something's going to be done. Alex Perche, ABC News, Minneapolis.